but it wasn't like the questions were so hard that you wouldn't know how to start to do them. It's more like you would have required an additional hour of the exam in order to attempt them. What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my second year of electrical engineering at UBC. Of the two courses that I took this year during the summer term, one of these courses was ELEC 41. In this video, we're gonna walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took this course and some survival tips to help you get through it. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience of taking ELEC 481 during the 2023 2024 school year in the summer term with Professor Jeffrey Carmichael. And all the information in this video is subject to change in the future, such as grading schemes, assignment and exam formatting, and course content. Lastly, timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. All right, so what is ELEC 41 all about? In this course, you will learn all about how to evaluate engineering projects from an economic perspective and how to measure financial desirability. In other words, from a strictly monetary perspective, is this project worth doing pretty much. You'll learn about how money and time are related to each other, economic analysis involving interest rates, inflation, depreciation, and taxes, cost estimation and budgeting, and financial analysis of engineering projects. Now that we know what the course is about, let's get into how ELEC 41 will be structured for any given week and the materials that you'll need for this course. As mentioned before, I took this course during the summer term, so the weekly schedule will be different compared to the section that is offered during the winter term. During the summer term, we had two three-hour lectures that were hosted online through Zoom. But I do know that the winter terms will have two one and a half hour lectures in person each week. In these lectures, the professor covered the main course concepts through a mixture of theory and some example problems from the textbook. Professor Carmichael went through the example problems by using both the formulas that were shown in the slides and through using Excel, which really helped to show how some of the problems were solved. In terms of workload, there are 10 assignments that you will need to complete for this course, with around two to eight questions per assignment. During the summer session, these assignments were due roughly every four to five days, and most likely during the winter session, these will be due every week. These assignments will test your understanding of the concepts that were taught during the lectures, and most of the time, they're heavily based on some of the textbook problems. For these assignments, you can complete them however you'd like to, as long as you're submitting a PDF with your final answers in it. Some of the questions you'll be working with may require you to use an Excel spreadsheet in which you will submit that along with your PDF of your final answers. In terms of required materials for this course, it's technically mandatory to have the Engineering Economics 7th edition textbook published by Pearson Canada. In my experience in this course though, even though ELEC 401 is heavily based on this textbook, I consider it just a really helpful optional resource. If you do want a copy of this textbook though, it's available as a print copy in the UBC bookstore, or you can download a PDF copy of an older version of this textbook through a link that I'll have in the description below. Now let's get into what you're actually going to learn in ELEC 401. In the first part of the course, you'll start with learning about engineering decision making and the time value of money, cash flow analysis and how to compare different alternatives using present worth and annual worth analysis, mortgages and the concept of internal rate of return, and benefit cost ratio analysis and how to measure benefits and costs. In the next part of the course, you'll learn about inflation and cost estimation, uncertainty and how it affects decision making, how to make a business plan, and how business accounting works. And in the last part of the course, you'll learn about depreciation methods and natural capital, taxes, asset replacement, and common project management techniques. And that's pretty much everything that you're gonna learn in ELEC 41. It may sound like a lot, but most of these concepts should be much easier to grasp compared to the engineering concepts that you've been taught in many of your other classes. In terms of the grading scheme for ELEC 401, here's the breakdown of everything that you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. Your 10 assignments will be weighted at 55% in total with different weightings for each of your assignments, and your final exam will be weighted at 45%. Pretty much one mark for anything in this course is worth 1% of your overall grade. Three things to note about our final exam though. It was a take home exam, it was open book, and we were allowed to use Excel during the exam. This will probably be different if you take ELEC 401 during the winter term, but this was my experience in the summer term. 
our final exam average was actually quite low, around 50% if I remember correctly, and everyone got scaled up by another 8.45%. Part of it could have been the fact that a lot of people who were taking this course were people doing their co-op terms, and part of it could have been the fact that some people, such as myself, just weren't able to do all of the questions in time. I think I skipped three questions on the final and that pretty much meant I lost 12 to 18% of my grade right there. But it wasn't like the questions were so hard that you wouldn't know how to start to do them. It's more like you would have required an additional hour of the exam in order to attempt them pretty much. At least that was my experience though. Most of the class were third and fourth year students that probably did a lot better than I did. All right, now into some survival tips, advice, and miscellaneous things to know before heading into ELEC 4A1. One thing that I definitely wish I spent more time practicing in this course was getting used to using Excel for the homework problems. If you're taking this course during the winter term, there is a chance that your professor may not allow you to use Excel at all for your assignments, but if you are allowed to do so, I would highly suggest using it for the questions that involve a lot of iterations over a long period of time. For example, I have no idea how I would be able to do mortgage tables or perform IRR analysis just using formulas. So if your professor does allow you to use Excel for your homework problems and possibly even during your final exam, I would highly suggest you start as soon as possible. Start just getting used to using it for your problems and your calculations. I will also say that because of the nature of ELEC 481, it can easily fall on the back burner in terms of your priorities, especially if you're in third or fourth year and taking very difficult courses along with ELEC 481. If you're in this position, it can be especially easy to end up skipping lectures and completing your homework assignments the day it's due. This certainly happened to me when I was working and taking this course at the same time, and it definitely put me in an undesirable state in terms of my learning. And the last thing that I'll say about ELEC 41 is to try to take an interest, no pun intended, in the concepts that will actually affect your financial life in the future. Concepts like inflation, taxes, mortgages, interest rates, and the time value of money. I honestly found it really interesting to learn about these topics from a novice perspective, and because of Professor Carmichael's background in business, he was able to explain them pretty well and make connections to real world examples. All right, so editing Avery here, and when I was recording the A roll for this, my ELEC 4 and 1 grades had not come out yet, but literally a day after I recorded this, it came out, so... I received a 74% in ELEC 481, and the class average was 69%, which was a lot higher than I expected considering our final exam average and also the assignment averages as well. And that's pretty much everything you need to know before heading into ELEC 481. I really, really hope this video helps you guys out so you guys don't have to suffer as much as I did in second year. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to notify whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.